we will now be going over how to handle a thermometric titration in a chemistry practical. So in a thermometric titration, we are carrying out a reaction between two substances and to determine the end point or when the reaction is complete, we will be measuring the change in temperature over the course of the reaction. Okay, so by measuring the total change from the beginning to the end of the experiment, we will be able to find the end point. We can record our data in, a, in such a format where first of all, we are recording the initial temperature Okay, and this will usually be of our analyte, which is placed in a beaker or in a styrofoam cup. If this is before any of the titrant has been added from the burette. So when we record the initial temperature, okay, then afterwards we can actually compare okay, as we add fixed volumes of the titrant. We see that we add 5 uh, cm cube, for example, in this, um, in this example given, okay, we're adding 5 cm cube at a time. Okay, and then um, after each 5 cm cube, okay, we are actually measuring the temperature, the highest temperature that's reached, and then we calculate the total temperature change. So once we have completed a full set of data, right, then we'll be plotting the data, the total temperature change, Okay, in the uh, in a graph as we'll see in the next slide. Okay, but one thing to take note of is that when you're recording the total temperature change, because we're thinking about the change in temperature, you need to indicate in your table whether this change is a positive change or negative change by um recording the um by including a sign. Okay, so for a graph, okay, uh, this is what the um a graph for a thermometric titration would typically be expected to look like. So we are having a graph of temperature change, total change in temperature over the volume of our titrant that has been added from the burette. And after plotting all of our data points, we will be expected to draw two straight lines of best fit, and these would be expected to intersect, as we can see in the example on the right. This intersection okay, actually shows the volume that is used at the end point. So we can see from here, okay, and we see what was the volume at this point. And this would be when the reaction was complete. Okay, this volume of solution that we um, that was used at the end point can then be used to perform calculations okay, that you would typically be doing for any titration experiment, such as concentration of solution, uh, percentage priority, and so on. Okay. okay. So before we move any further, let's talk about um, the shape of this graph. So this is the expected shape okay, where uh, we have... A the first best, the first straight line or best fit okay, shows an increasing temperature starting from zero because this is when no solution or no uh, titrant has been added yet. Therefore, no reaction has occurred. And there should be no temperature change as of yet. So for a thermometric titration graph, okay, it would def the first straight line or best fit will definitely be expected to um, meet your origin okay, for these reasons. And as the um, solution is added, as our titration is added, in this particular case, the reaction is exothermic, thus the temperature increases. Okay, for however, okay, you could also have some scenarios where you're carrying out an endothermic reaction and you could have temperature decreasing as well. Okay, either way, once we reach that maximum, as previously mentioned, 
Okay, this is our endpoint. And then as access solution is added, Okay, access solution is added okay, from this point onwards. Okay, the temperature actually decreases or is expected to decrease because the reaction is already complete. And as we're adding more solution, okay, that heat is only further distributed um, in the increasing volume of solution and heat is also loss to the surroundings. Okay, so this is what's expected. However, when we actually carry out the experiment, okay, some things that you should bear in mind, okay, when we are when we are plotting our graph, okay, of course, as previously mentioned, okay, our first line of best fit must meet our origin. Okay, but for our second line of best fit, we know that it's expected to have a negative gradient, okay, or the opposite gradient of our first straight line. Okay, and uh, that's because of the heat exchange with the surroundings. However, in some scenarios, when you carry out this experiment, you may notice that there is a little to no change in the temperature. And this may be very concerning during the experiment itself. So what do we do in such a scenario? Okay, um, bearing in mind that we do expect that slight change in temperature, okay, you just um you can just um record it as a very slight decrease in temperature, okay, so that you do have that slight gradient. Okay, uh, but there is no need to, to uh, try and uh, force your results to fit the expected trend okay, because um, we are always going with, we always try to work with the data that we have, all right? Okay, so having carried out this experiment, okay, uh, recorded all our data, plotted our graph, and um, we're not going to touch on the calculations here because it's very similar to your typical titration type of calculations okay but for a thermometric titration specifically okay, we do have some special types of sources of error okay so we'll be looking at that now okay in a uh, in a practical okay, we always want to think about possible sources of error and we know that sources of error cannot be due to human error but due to something that is actually uh, inherent in the experiment itself, so the experimental design, okay, or the apparatus that we are using. Okay, with that, with those considerations in mind, okay, we also want to to remember that um, when you're thinking about the source of error, you'll be looking at what is your key measurement that we are taking. Okay, so in a thermometric titration, we always measure the change in temperature, and so something that um could affect this result which is our source of error, would actually be the loss of heat to surroundings or the exchange of heat with the surroundings. Okay, so whenever a question asks you, okay, uh, in a thermal magic titration, what is the uh, possible key source of error? You could actually say loss of heat to surroundings in an exothermic reaction or in the scenario where you have an endothermic reaction, you could say it's the gain of heat from the surroundings, basically transfer of heat. How can we improve the experiment then okay, to minimize that source of error? Okay, uh, depends on the apparatus that you were given, the apparatus that you are instructed to use. So if only a beaker was used, okay, if we use a beaker to add our analyte, then you can use a styrofoam cup because a styrofoam cup, as we know, is more insulated. Okay, styrofoam is a, more, is a better insulating material as compared to the glass of a beaker. Or if you are already using a styrofoam cup, what we can then do to um, add further insulation, okay, add more insulation, or okay, we could actually cover the styrofoam, styrofoam cup with a lid, with a small hole at the top for the thermometer or for us to add the titrant to.